history class. Now, today we are taking you all the way to Burkina Faso. Now, remember that Burkina Faso is a very, very wonderful country that also borders Ghana. In other words, it shares a border with Ghana, my brother, my sister. And in fact, the largest ethnic group in Burkina Faso is actually the Moshe. Moshi. Some people say Mosi. And they actually came from the backbone of the Dagomes. In fact, the founder of Ouagadougou and the Mosi clan actually was a Dagomba princess who met a hunter on her way into total liberation. Her father didn't want her to get married. For him, she was too beautiful to be controlled by any man in marriage. And therefore, decided that she should stay with that a man. She broke away from her father and went all the way into Burkina Faso. But of course, on the way, she met a man called Riale. They gave birth to a son called Widraogo. In fact, Riale was a man who rode, my brother, my sister, a horse. So the horse is the symbol of Burkina Faso, whose largest ethnic group came out of the Dagomba and is known as the Mosi. Because of that, the Mosis and the Dagombas are permanently at peace. They signed a spiritual accord never ever to fight, just like the Enzimas and the Ashantis. My brother, my sister, the Moses and the Dagombas are the same people. Their language is similar. When you speak Mosi and I speak Dagbani, I will be able to pick some words and make a meaning out of the whole sentence. Today we are talking about one of the great kings of Mosi land by name Wabgo. Repeat after me, Wabgo, 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 Wabgo. Wabgo simply means the elephant. The elephant. In fact, in Dagbani, the elephant is called Wabgo. In Mori, that's the Mosi language, they also call the elephant Wabgo. He was called Wabgu. In other words, the elephant. But he wasn't born Wabgu. He was born Bukari Kutu. And Bukari is spelled B-O-U-K-A-R-Y. And Kutu is K-O-U-T-O-U. But with time, he decided to call himself Wabgu. A.K.A. the elephant. My brother, my sister... He probably was born somewhere in 1820. He died in 1904, five years before Kwame Nkrumah was born. My brother, my sister, can we go into the story of Wabgo? <laughs> Wabgu is spelled W-O-B-G-H-O. It's also spelled W-O-B-O-G-O. Wabgu. Mm -mm -mm. He was born in Wagadugu. Correct pronunciation, Wado. My God. Somewhere in 1820. About... The time that his father was a king. About the time that there was so much peace in Wagadugu. Oh my God. He was born into the Mosi kingdom of Burkina Faso. My brother, my sister. And his father was a king. Who was surrounded by formidable cavalry. Oh my God. Horses, shields, 
swords and spears. He was a formidable king, his father. And when he was born, in fact, the father was extremely happy. For a reason, he was chubby at birth. He was round and big. No wonder he grew up becoming a very huge person. And he took the name Wabugu, elephant. Mm -mm -mm. Watch this. He had other brothers who were elderly. And when his father was very old, though so fond of his father, he was his father's beloved child. And he loved his father too. His father wished that he became king because he was so strong and at the same time very, 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 very warrior-like. In other words, warlike. My brother, my sister. He moved all the way from Yatinga to the capital, Wahiguya. My brother, my sister. Doing so many different things from hunting all the way down to in fact, farming. In fact, even at the age of 16, he looked like a full-blown man. And he loved women. Women. Ah. His biggest delicacy was women. And this is the great king we are talking about. Oh, my God. You know what his name is? Wabu, the elephant. Watch this. Now, Wabugu loved women. In fact, he married 100 women. 100. Some of them he built villages for and put them in charge of a whole village. My brother, my sister, you see how round and big he was. Decorated by the British. I will tell you more about this. Oh my God. Wabugu. Watch this. Now Wabugu loved women. I told you he married 100 women. And he had children that he himself could not count. Some historians put it at 710 children. Hey, powerful man. He was truly an elephant. He was busy both in the bedroom and also on the field of war. Hallelujah. Wabugu. Now his father had already told him that he wished that he would take over as king. But because of his age, he knew he would not get it. You know what happened? He knew he was strong. So he decided to war against his own brother. His brother was called Sanun, S-A-N-U-M, Sanun. In fact, the Dagomba version of Sanun is Sununu. Sununu. Repeat after me. Sununu. <laughs> Wabugu. Mm. He was called Sanun. I said that the Gomba version of Sanun is Sununu. <laughs> Watch this. He warred against Sanun, but he couldn't succeed. And for that matter, he exiled himself all the way from Ouagadougou and went into some hidden places, hey, leaving his wives behind. Hey. But look at what he did. He went all the way to the city of Banema, on the border of the kingdom, very close to the Gold Coast at the time. Look at what happened. He lived there, and he was involved in slave trading. Like the very first photograph you saw, he was able to capture a lot of the Gurunsi people. Now, in Burkina Faso, another ethnic group is the Gurunsi. He captured a lot of the Gurunsi people and sold them into slavery. Made a lot of money out of selling slaves. It was at that point the British heard about him. He wanted to become Mogonaba, but he couldn't become one. But 
In 1890, Sahanun, also Nunu, died. And when he died, he had no male hair. And his brothers were all in competition to become Mogonaba. Unfortunately, our man for today, Wabugu, could not become Mogonaba because he had rebelled against his own brother, Sanun, who was Mogonaba at the time, or was supposed to be Mogonaba. So the elders sat together. Now, I myself have been to the palace of the Mogonaba. Producer, who put up a photograph of Black Rasta and the Mogonaba in Burkina Faso. You will see me in the palace of the Mogonaba. In fact, it's the same palace they sat, my brother, my sister, to decide who the next Mogonaba would be. It was at that point, Wabugu surrounded the whole palace of the Mogonaba with his soldiers and formidable cavalry. Hey! They surrendered immediately and he became the next Moronaba by force Kudita, Bukari Kutu, a.k.a. Wabugu. We are ending the story. Now listen to this interesting thing. Now, in September 1890, after the death of Sanun, Dr. Francois Crozat, who was all the way from England, came to visit Wabugu. This is Black Rasta and Mogonaba. This is the current Mogonaba, and this is the palace of the Mogonaba. At this same palace, this meeting took place. And Wabugu went in there, ransacked the whole place, and forced himself through a coup d'etat to become the next Mogonaba. In fact, if he had been patient, after the death of his brother Sanun, he would have become the Mogonaba. But because of the rebellion, the Mosi people lost it. And therefore, he was loaded. My brother, my sister, this is the palace of the Mogonaba. And all the people you see on the uh, left of the Mogonaba, they are all his elders. You see the man squatting by him, that is his linguist. And I went to stand there and talk to Mogonaba. He couldn't ask me to kneel down to talk to him because I told him and he knew which ethnic group I was coming from. And for that matter, since you are younger, I don't kneel down before you. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hear this now. Yabo, yabo, yabo. When Dr. Francois Crozat arrived, there was a war between the Mosi and some other ethnic groups like the Gurunsi and the rest. He tried as much as possible to stop this. In fact, and I'm talking about Wabugu, just to be able to impress his British guests that everything was okay, his land was peaceful, but no, he came through a war and his land was full of war. People were being killed. Ha! Crozat was never ever impressed. He wrote finally that the man spent all his time in the palace, scared to go out. He was a coward and at the same time, he married 100 women who he couldn't all satisfy. Oh my God. Finally, he wrote that Wabugu was a man who spent all the money on the land, on juju men. In fact, on Islamic clerics and juju men who made him the most expensive amulets, a.k.a. Bansere, Kagadu. Oh my God. But there was a rebellion. What happened? The British wanted him to become an ally. They wanted to make his area protectorate, but he refused. And the French came in. My brother, my sister. In fact, the French were those who came in first. He refused. And then what happened? He refused to sign with them. Hey. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, Wabugu ruled at the time when the French and British were taking control of the region. An intensive distrust for the French and the British 
he had. Now, when the French explorer, Parfait Louis Montel, visited Ouagadougou in 1891, hoping Wabugu would agree to a French protectorate, he refused. But later, he signed a deal with a Gold Coast man by name George Ekem Ferguson, a fanti, to be under the British. Unfortunately, he didn't respect this. And then his whole kingdom was taken down. In 1896, the French invaded Ouagadougou because he refused to sign an agreement with them. And when he attempted to resist them, his whole city was burnt down. He ran away all the way to the Gold Coast, very close to the Gold Coast border, at a place called Zongri, where he died in 1909. I beg your pardon, 1904. Today we remember the story of Wabugu. He resisted the French. He allied with the British, signed an agreement with George Kem Ferguson on behalf of the British. The French finally came in, destroyed his land, deposed him. He died near the Gold Coast border of Zongri. Today we remember you, Wabugu. 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 Oh, Papa Uninyaminko Wati. Papa Uninyaminko. 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 And in the burden of knowledge, I ask you, now that you know, what would you do? Be an any old lame in your buffet, and Zudakagane, Mezaka Yine. Yeah, and Papango Bukaya and Fifia in Yanuka and Awabana and Webe, then Lele and Jiman Singabe, Kunele and Jiman Singabe. He was decorated by the British, but they couldn't protect him when the French came in and took over the whole area. The British ran away. <laughs>